Hey guys, welcome back to another something in about five minutes and today we are talking abnormal posturing So let's get started. So guys abnormal posturing here is uh, is really defined as an involuntary flexion or extension of the arms and legs indicating severe brain injury That is absolutely key for you guys to remember Okay, it occurs when one set of muscles become incapacitated while the opposing set is not and an external stimulus such as pain causes the working set of the muscles to contract. Okay, so as we move on here, just remember these three big key points. Okay, it can occur as a response to painful stimuli as well as it can actually occur on its own without painful stimuli. Okay, now it's typically seen when herniation is occurring or is imminent. Now remember that herniation is when there is so much pressure built up within the skull and brain cavity that the brain and the brain stem is literally getting squished out of the frame and magnum or the large hole at the base of the skull. Okay, and that is what herniation is is uh, is defined as and that is typically when we are going to be seeing these posturing type events okay and typically it occurs in two forms and we're going to talk about both of these forms decorticate and decerberate so decorticate posture is a sign of damage to the nerve pathway within the midbrain okay remember the midbrain is between the brain and the spinal cord this is typically that brainstem area okay and we'll see it on the next slide exactly where it is located on the brainstem but remember the the midbrain controls motor function and motor movement okay and here it is located in this black circle that is your midbrain so it is at the top of your brainstem uh, typically you will see decorderate posturing uh, earlier on because the pressure is hitting this midbrain first okay that's key so some causes of decorticate posture okay bleeding in the brain literally from any cause if it increases enough you're going to get uh this decorticate posturing strokes brain problems due to drugs and or poisonings okay tbis traumatic brain injuries uh liver failure that eventually causes brain issues okay increased pressure within the brain from any cause okay that's kind of an umbrella term uh, or an umbrella category just remember increased intracranial pressure will eventually untreated and unfound will no matter what the cause will eventually cause uh, a herniation effect okay uh, brain or a brain stem tumor okay and infections such as uh, Reyes syndrome, which you really have to be uh, worried about more so in children uh, than adults. All right, now here's a picture literally showing you guys exactly what decorticate posturing or decorticate rigidity is. Okay, so you're going to have adducted, uh, which means close to the body. Uh, arms. They're not going to be out here. They're going to be close to the body. They're going to be flexed. So they're going to be at a 90 degree angle and they're going to be coming up towards the body. The fists are going to be clenched like this and the the fingers are going to be to the to the sternum. And sometimes they'll even roll inwards and the backs of your hands will be touching. OK, and it'll be like fists into your sternum. OK, uh, your legs. This can happen on one leg or both legs, and it really doesn't have, you know, it's not like one side or the other. It could happen to either. But typically the leg is flexed, so it's nice and stiff and straight, uh, but it will be internally rotated, okay? So the foot might point outward, but it's going to be internally rotated, all right? And these are the big signs that you're looking for the, the thing that uh, most providers are taught to remember decorticate is you're bringing your arms to the core. Decorticate to the core. Okay, and that's typically how people uh, remember decorticate. All right, guys, now let's get into decerebrate posturing. Decerebrate posturing is a sign of significant damage to the brainstem. 
typically below the level of the red nucleus within the midbrain. Remember, both of these posturings are happening to the brainstem within the midbrain. Here you can see where the actual level of the red nucleus is within the midbrain. Remember, with decorticate, decorticate happens first. So here you're compressing the midbrain until you get to that level of the red nucleus. And then typically you will either start to see signs of decerebrate or you'll start to see signs of decorticate and decerebrate posturing. Okay, so knowing where this is in relation to the start of the medulla and the pons is actually kind of handy because you can kind of tell how far along the herniation is going. Now some causes. You guys should have already seen these because the causes are literally identical. Anything that is going to ultimately cause herniation is going to cause decerebrate posturing. Okay, so I'm not going to go over these again. Now let's actually get into the nitty gritty on what you're going to see when you see decerebrate posturing or decerebrate rigidity. Okay, so typically, again, this can happen on a painful response or can happen upon its own, but you typically will see a um, adducted, again, arms are close and they're rigid. They are flexed out, okay? And elbows are locked, okay? They are rotated inwards towards the core and the, uh, the hands are clenched but rotated outwards as you see in this picture, okay? But then with your legs, your legs are also flexed uh, downward but your feet are going to be uh, pointed straight outwards uh, like the rest of your body. There's going to be no inward or outward rotation of your feet. It will be straight outwards. Um, you might even see some clenched teeth uh, during this posturing and or some neck flexion where the neck actually comes up and bends um, to where you're almost like trying to roll onto the top of your head when you're laying on your back. So your shoulders kind of come up, your neck arches, and you kind of roll up onto the top of your head. Uh, all are things that you might see in decerebrate posturing. And remember, this can happen on one side of the body, both sides of the body, or it can happen without the legs, and it can just happen within the arms. So this is why knowing decerebrate and decorticate posturing is so critical. In ending here, I just want to leave with this. Remember that herniation is the name of the game. Herniation is going to cause a lot of significant issues with vital signs. So be ready for imminent cardiac arrest, cardiac dysrhythmias, and or respiratory depression and or arrest. So be prepared that your patient may have a you know bad outcome. Typically, a lot of patients that you see in this type of posturing will have bad outcomes ultimately when we get them to the hospital. When we're doing our motor response um, in our GCS scores, we have we typically are going to score for a normal adult a decorticate posturing of a number three and a decerebrate posturing of a number two. So that'll help you out within your GCS score for motor function. So guys, that's it for today's video. Thank you for joining along. I know this was a little bit longer than our typically, you know, five minute videos, but it is very need to know information. So I hope you got something out of it. I will see you guys next Tuesday.